Um, so yeah, my talk is called Rust Carter, Ideas for Improving Rust Teaching Tools. Uh, like was said, I taught Rust for a little bit at UNSW, I'm still teaching Rust, um, and I have an interest in both education and Rust, so it kind of worked out well. Um, what I want to do today, I want to highlight two projects which I worked on, uh, Macro Carter and Lifetime Carter, so if you're interested in them, you'll know to go and look at them. Uh, I want to talk about how Rust allows for building tools to help with learning as a more general idea, and then talk a little bit about how I think Rust could be improved further. Um, so let's start with Macro Carter, which is the first project that I worked on. Um, this was worked on mainly for the Rust course at UNSW, though it was actually like a separate personal project that just happened to end up in the UNSW course by accident, who knows? Um, so uh, I don't know if this code is very readable. Um, oh, well, you know, okay, cool. I don't know if this code is very readable. Um, who feels like they understand what this code is doing? I'll give people like 10 seconds to, okay, cool. So I'm sort of seeing some like hand waving and some, some yeses. Um, who thinks that they could like, if they were told what this code does, and I'll tell you it basically constructs a graph but from like a, an adjacency list basically so create a gra uh, a vector from saying that you know node number three goes to nodes number four five and six um who thinks they could write this code raise your hand without cheating without cheating yeah uh we'll say cheating is i don't know looking at a solution that tells you something like what this does um yeah, so uh, I think one of the big problems that existed in the Rust language, or big problem, medium problem, me medium sized problem, was that there wasn't actually a good thing which uh, taught you how to do macros. Uh, there was certainly the Rust reference, uh, which in explains in great detail um, how macros work, and the little book of Rust macros is also a great resource. Uh, and then there's also the Rust book, but it's really sort of a vague introduction. It doesn't step you through getting from that like inter introductory stage to really knowing how to use them. Um, and so basically we, I, I built this course and the course basically takes you from writing your first macro all the way through to doing some like very unspeakably interesting things with macros. Um, so the idea was basically incremental steps. So there's a short bit of reading and then you actually do an exercise. Um, and interestingly, the, like normally when we do exercises at uni, the way it works is that we run your code at the end and check does the code that you produced do the same thing as our reference solution. Um, but with macros, a more interesting way of doing it is saying, is the code that your macro expands to equivalent to the code that we wanted? Um, and that actually produces like uh, an interesting exercise because rather than thinking about, does this rap macro produce the right results? It's, does this, like, what does this macro expand to? And is that the correct expansion? Um, so the fact that we were writing this in, in Rust really helped because of two things. Uh, first of all, Cargo Expand, which is a tool which uh, takes your code and expands all the macros and formats it really nicely. Uh, and so that meant that we could actually do that sort of diffing between the output that we expected and the output um, that, that the person produced. And also MDBook is awesome. I don't know if people have used it, but MDBook is like brilliant. It means like, I think it encourages people to write better documentation. Um, anyway, so the term ended, people had good feedback from Macro Carter. Um, people saw a need for this. It got a bunch of stars and some good feedback. Um, and we used it in 6991, which is the Rust course. And it made me think like, okay, well are there other, are there other places that we could improve Rust's documentation slash teaching using this structure. And the first thing that came to mind is lifetimes. So um, again, a little survey. Here is a piece of code. All it does is it inserts some data into a vector at a particular location, but there's a bunch of references lying around. Uh, who thinks that they could annotate this with the correct references? Um, and some hands go up. Some people are sort of shaking their hand. Um, and again, I think that this is an area where uh, the Rust book kind of starts you off and it shows you, okay, here's how basic lifetimes work. Also Rustlings kind of starts you off with the basics. There's a good reference on how it works sort of if you really want to know the details. But again, it's kind of, there's no intermediate step. Uh, and I think as well, one of the things which, I, I don't want to call it a flaw in Rust because it is a good thing, um, but because of lifetime elision, all of the simple cases that people try and use to explain how lifetimes and lifetime annotations work are kind of like hidden from you by the compiler. So the first time that you bump into lifetimes is when you're A, probably deep in some other rabbit hole and you're like, oh my God, why do I have to deal with the lifetimes as well? And B, like the, they're complicated enough that you kind of have to go back and learn from the beginning without any good resources. Um, but I think what, what I heard from a couple of different people is like the first time when you write a program where you actually need to really think about the lifetimes and it forces you into like really thinking about them and you write them out, 
you're like, oh, okay, I understand lifetimes now. And they're much easier after that. So the idea was basically build a similar tool to Macro Carta, but, the, but that um, spits out you know, where, where you have to write the right lifetimes and kind of do that in a progressive way. Um, so you can see the structure here, but basically it goes through why we have lifetimes and then it looks at the different types of lifetimes. So lifetimes on references and then on types and impuls and that sort of thing. Um, one of the other things which was really nice is that because of some wonderful Rust features I'll talk about in a second, we could turn off lifetime elision. Uh, so you can basically raise an error if somebody tries to align a lifetime. Uh, and so you can force people to do lifetimes in the simple cases, which means that when you get to the more complex ones, it's an evolution from what they've already done, not a completely new concept. Uh, not all the programming exercises are programming exercises, but it still worked pretty well. Um, so then, uh, how did language help? Uh, require lifetimes is a proc macro. You can find it on crates.io. Um, but all you needed to do to force people to write lifetimes is just to write a proc macro that checks their code and says if there's a place where there should be a lifetime and they didn't put one there, raise an error. Um, so that sort of introspection at compile time makes it really nice to do this. Um, so I think overall from those two projects, what I observed is that yeah, teaching intermediate concepts in Rust is hard. It's not something that we do perfectly yet. Um, there are tools we could use in the language to make it easier, and there's lots of work left to do. Uh, there are some prominent, promising innovations, which I would encourage you to go and look up in your own time. Rust Viz, which kind of is able to show you what the lifetimes and ownership in your program looks like visually. Rust EDU, which is a group of college, uh, college educators mainly who are trying to work on college courses for Rust. Rust Analyzer has some interesting tools. Specifically, I contributed a way that you can expand a macro partially. So you can just like go one level deep into the macro and see what it does. Um, the Rust book with quizzes, again, kind of adds an extra layer to Rust, so you're forced into actually doing some work. And Rustlings as well is really great for getting, like, forcing you to actually learn by doing rather than just learn by reading. And then Learn Rust in a Month of Lunches is a new book as well, which I hear does pretty much the same thing. So there are some ideas I think we could take this even further. For instance, you know, maybe we can use the tools that we've got to build something like Regex Pal. If you've used Regexes before, what it does is that you can type in a Regex, you can type in a test string, and it shows you, here is what that Regex matches. Here's all the information that's captured. And you, we might be able to build something that interactively does this with a macro. I think that'd be really cool. Um, another thing which I know might be helpful but would require some bigger changes to the language is um, adding the ability to put lifetime annotations within a function. So again, what often happens when we're teaching the language is we can't really show how lifetimes work in a really simple scope because there's no way within the language to say this block has this lifetime and then annotate all the required lifetimes. But when the Rust Anomicon wants to be able to like, show you how lifetimes works, they invent this syntax out of nowhere and say, hey, this isn't real Rust code, but it's kind of useful. So I think it would be interesting to, to build that into the uh, language. And then again, I think like editing the Rust book so the uh, exercises are annotated uh, with you know, either rustlings or with uh, quizzes by default would also be a really cool step. Um, yeah, so basically, I mean, what next? What what you take away from this talk, uh, talk? Number one, I mean, go and check out the projects if you think they'd be interesting. Number two, uh, are the ideas that we've got that I've presented here the right direction? Are there other things we could be doing? Are there other areas of the language that need this focus on tooling or intermediate sort of education? And are there other tools we can build to support this? That's the end of my talk, and I'm interested in questions and also thoughts as well. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so an idea that you could uh, go into is, I think, Rust async and polling and wakers, that is like an area that I found people like struggle a lot with, especially when they need to start writing their own um, async functions, but not as in like, the AC keyword, but a function that returns Paul and has to like get a waker at the correct time and then call that one again. For sure. So the, the suggestion there was thinking about async and poll and building something like this that works particularly for people who need to get into the weeds of async rather than just using it. I even think as well, like uh, having used async before and getting slightly confused by like forgetting to do a dot await, there's probably a little bit more work that could be done on just learning the async experience in the first place. I'm sure it's gotten better since I last did it, but that's something maybe to think about as well. Yeah. So what, what was the, like, the diffy with the rabbit hole that inspired What was the trigger? Uh, the, the trigger was we were sitting trying to figure out what exercises we would use to teach macros. Uh, f this is for Macro Carta. Um, and we said, well, we don't have any exercises. And my thought was we could write some, 
but I feel like it would be much more valuable if we could walk people through the whole process of learning it. And also I like tried to learn them myself for a different thing. We were writing the first assignment for the course and I tried to write a macro and I like couldn't do it. And then I tried to learn how to write a macro and I couldn't do it. So uh, yeah, I was like, let's make this. Yeah. So how do you debug macros? Okay, so um, cargo expand is really helpful. Um, the incremental expansion that I added, I think is also very helpful in the few cases I've used it. So that's a little plug for that. Um, and then apart from that, pain and suffering are the main tools of choice, I would say. Um, yeah? Is it possible to write unit tests for macros? Uh, is it possible to write unit tests for macros? Great question. Um, yes, it is. There is a tool that I cannot remember the name of that will check whether the code just compiles. And it can be useful both for documentation. So in MDBook, you can say, um, make sure that this code compiles. And there's also a tool that somebody wrote. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. Do you, uh, try build, yes. Um, that lets you write tests for whether a macro will compile. Uh, just one more question. Here. Yep. Well, is there a question? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, more of a feature request. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so this is all on GitHub. I think uh, the question was, can do, do this in Rust Analyzer? Yeah, you're talking about, like, I've used your big macro expansion. Perfect. Like, just more. Everything in Rust Analyzer. Yeah, no, <laughs> put more stuff in Rust Analyzer. I completely agree. Rust Analyzer is awesome. Cool, and I think awesome. I'm out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you.